Hello, welcome to another edition of, well, whatever this is. Today we've got nitrous blowers, turbos and bacon. And of course, a cup of tea. I'll give that a minute. And while we've got a, <coughs> while we've got a minute, this came through the post. It was a purchase from the Evil Bay. Sometimes you can find a good one, but it's a risk. I must admit, I've already opened this and had a look, and I've messaged the seller to say I'm very pleased with the additional care that he's gone to to wrap this up so well. The box had those white polystyrene, you know, like Albino Watsits in the box, and then there was an outer box and a covering on that. It was really nicely packaged, so thank you. I will keep him anonymous, but uh, just to say, there are some good ones out there. Speaking of good ones, this is a good one. This is a Lima Network Southeast, you can tell that because it says it on it, class 50. I think at some point it's had a few additional extras in terms of details, brass buffers. I'm sure Lima would have used plastic ones. And this head code looks like an extra piece that's been put on there. Fine, no problem at all. I paid a good price. But you know me. I don't leave anything alone. Always improvements to be made. It's even got a uh, the Royal Oak nameplate is um, an etched brass or stainless or something nameplate. Anyway, there's that. Here is the inside of the Lima Class 50. There's a lot of nothing, so we can put all sorts of things. Ubiquitous Ringfield motor and, you know me, I'm going to put a CD drive motor in there. Well, I haven't actually tested to see if this one works. It looks like it may have been run, but not a whole lot. Still got the traction tyres on there, still reasonably clean. Oh, pardon me, that tea was hot. I'm going to um, give all that a clean up and a service regardless. Bang a new motor in there. And the reason for that is... Well, I'm going to be converting it to digital sound with another HM7000 decoder. HM7. I, wherever it is, I'll put it in. But because there's so much space in here, I thought we might be able to upgrade the speaker a little bit. Ta-da! This came from Roads and Rails. I will recommend them. This is the classic EM2 squeaker. So you've got a, the um, actual driver this side and a reflex the other side, which is just a piece of rubber. There's no electronics behind it. So it just, it gives you the reverberation is what I'm saying. There's plenty of room in here to plonk this anywhere. So we can have some nice sound. I've done it several times with Lima models before. And you can really, um, because it's great big open space in here, the sound actually echoes and reverberates. Some of this, Loose plastic I'm going to have to ditch. This, I think, kind of goes in the middle there and blacks out these windows, which is a shame. It really wants a piece of clear in there. I'll have a rummage through my drawer of leftover stuff and see if I've got some clear um, poly what's it to buy me. It might even be able to cut this bag open or this box. And in this box is an AE model. It says it right there uh, stay alive capacitor again from roads and rails they have recommended this one and I've had success using them before on the flying Scotsman and yeah, on other things let me find that again this little stay alive features four super capacitors I believe they are might be just a regular electrolytic it's difficult to tell but they come with a plug that goes straight onto the connection on the HM7000 decoder so it's it's just plug and play it's nice and you can secrete this anywhere maybe not anywhere so there we go big speaker big stay alive some black tack and a motor let's dig in first of all I need to remove this enormous weight 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 
and find a place where we're going to locate this squeaker. I think forward of that weight might be a good idea. And um, I might carefully cut open, that was silly, these exhaust pipe holes on the top of here uh, to allow the sound to emit. Mind you, if I don't put any glazing in here, it would do the same job, but I, I, I like seeing glazing in windows. It's kind of why they're windows, right? Yeah. So yeah, let's um, let's dig in. I need to cut these tabs off because I'm not I'm not going to screw this down. I'm probably just going to screw this up. If I mount that vertically, that gives me enough space in there. Yeah. What I'm looking at here is the weight's designed to go this way up. It's perfect for that. But if I mount it vertically, it gives me a bit more space in here betwixt that connection and the weight for this and that will fit a treat without fouling on anything. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Of course, I'm using the best possible workspace, my knee, to cut this. I talk to the trees. That's why they put me away. Thank you, Eggles. Um, there we are. There's those little bits cut off. These come moulded with a little piece on the end here. Cut the camera angle so you can see. You can just screw them down, but they take up space and I'm not going to screw them down, so I should remove it. Here we are. Pull that cable off so the front bogey comes out. That just unclips from there. There we are. That plonks in there. That's a really good fit. That's just snug. Oh, clip. Should we have that clip in? That fits in there beautifully. I will. Um, should I put a blob of glue on there? Blob of black tack. This is lovely stuff. The blob of black tack. Just stop it falling out. It's not going to anyway because you heard how tight a fit that is in there. It's a really good fit in there. There, one squeaker and weight. We will just need to check the oh, come on. Need to check the clearance on that weight for the roof. Looks like we'll get away with it. We'll double check that. With these installations, you often have to take the body on and off dozens of times to make sure nothing's fouling or no wires are pinched or the weight doesn't rattle. That's okay. This is a really nice livery, I like this. I need to buy some coaches to go with it. Yeah. Don't be afraid of old stuff like Lima. They're not bad. Cheers. So, I haven't got a Hornby HM7000 Dakota like you know I said I was going to do. So I ordered one. I had a voucher, so I had £20 off at Hornby. Bonus. Also found discount code online. It's always worth looking for a discount code online, and I managed to save 10% as well. Discount I used at hornby.com was Heritage 10 for 10% off. By the time this video goes out, that voucher probably won't work, but try your luck basically very carefully taking this to pieces because like before ring fields are okay if you look after them this one looks okay so i intend to keep all of the pieces i need that wire for use elsewhere so i'm just disconnecting this um motor from the frame is what i'm doing here well, you can see that Anyway, how are you? I haven't spoken in ages. Tell me what's going on. Write it down in the comments if you like. It's, what else could do with a clean? See the contact underneath? It's only sprung loaded on the front and rear of the two of the three wheels. The middle one's just kind of an idler, so it's not giving you any propulsion, nor is it picking up any elastic trickery. So it is 
useless. But it gets in the way of the motor, so we can only put a small motor in, like I said before. This is the ring field. That's in really good condition. I don't think that's seen a lot of use, if any. So I'm going to put that in my little box of spares. Because, oh, there's another stay alive there. No, the brushes were still good. The springs were still good. I'm pretty sure I don't need that backing plate either, so I'll save all of those. Okay. The magnet. So now, as the gearbox is all disconnograted, see that? So we need to insert a motor on this side. Uh, this one's slightly different because we have to push the the gear on slightly further. This gear has been pushed further onto the motor. You see there? Because it needs to go inside this cavity with um, the gear and the bearing poking out the other side. And it should. You don't need that bearing. Will it clearance it? Yeah, easy. Should be able to slip it in there. Pop it through like that. Hello. Don't know why I said it like that. Just go ahead and ignore it. Pretend it never happened. Edit it out. I found my Hornby HM7000 decoder, and I'm going to do the usual thing of cutting the plug off the end because where we're going, we don't need wires. So, only run we moved the weight, popped the stay alive underneath, and popped this um, big squeaker in its place. We need to attach that to this. I also need to do the motor, but. Um, stand by for that one it will happen don't worry purple wire we don't need what color wire is next i think that's gray we do need that for the motor white would be a headlight which i might put some lighting on this at a later date so we'll save that the next wire on here is black which we're going to need for track pickup and blue which we'll need for that light green which we'll need for another Device red for track pickup, yellow for tail light, and orange for the motor. So we really just need those four black and red for the track, and orange and grey for the motor. That looks like a nice place to stick that. Yeah. There's plenty of room to work with in here. You don't need an installation tutorial on this, it's just Put it in. And that's what we're going to do. We'll stick a bit of black tack on here. I've now run out of black tack, so there won't be any more videos until I go and buy some more black tack. There we go. So I'm going to start by plugging the Stay Alive cable in. This is so tiny. These little plugs are fiddly, guys. And girls, whoever, kids, present. Tiny little wire, plug in that stay alive in there. I know I've got loads of wheels, I don't really need a stay alive, but realistically, this is an 060. Let me explain. 040, really. Only two of these wheels pick up from one side of the track, only two of these wheels pick up from the other side of the track. So realistically, it's not a 12-wheel pickup, it's a four-wheel pickup. Yeah, I know, right? It sucks. I probably should clean these up. We can do that when it's all back together. These cables that I'm not going to use, I'm going to bundle them together and not to use them. And I'm going to try and keep them safe because I do intend to come back in here at a later date and put some lighting on it because lights look nice particularly on these diesels you know it's nice to have 
uh, the head code lit up as at the moment it's just destination unknown Why is my doing what it's doing? Um, we need Hornby's original squeaker did I put that somewhere safe oh, I bet I did it'll be in one of these little bags I keep losing things I'm amazed at how easy it is to there it is Seems a shame to waste this speaker because there's nothing wrong with it. But all I need off of it is that wire, a plug. So if you need one of these little squeakers and a set of these plastic things, give me a shout. I'm only going to cut the cable off. I cut it halfway because I don't need all that length. Measure it before I cut it. Yeah, you saw me measuring it, didn't you? Uh, term a soldering iron on Americans call it a soldering iron I presume this is soldered so soldering iron soldering iron I'm just gonna tin the surfaces of this wire F. And I oh yes, probably use some heat shrink tubing there. I happen to have some here. They call this stuff heat shrink tubing because it's tubing that shrinks with heat. You know, that's why they call it that. Otherwise, it'd be called something else, wouldn't it? Need to get some more of this. I'm running out of a lot of things. Consumable items just seem to will get consumed like tea there's never enough tea here um, There's those two wires soldered on. It's going to run the edge of the soldering arm over here to shrink that tubing and protect those surfaces. Oh, that's warm. Who would have thought? And then we can run the squeaker wire around here neatly and just plug it into the decoder that's why i wanted that wire because it's got the plug on the end uh you can buy the plug separately i just i didn't do that why buy something when i've got it for free right I'm trying to do this cheap settle down i know it's an old lemur but they're good don't knock them cheers Moses. Okay, so next we need to probably get some track pickup. These um, tangs, sprung loaded tangs on lemurs, they, they're nice to order to because they're copper, but they absorb the heat. So it, they're a bit tricky to work with fairly powerful soldering iron to get the solder to flow on them and then the wire falls off anyway this is the original wire from here but um, it broke off during uninstallation disassemblification okay that's on there now I'm just going to hold it for a minute because oh, I've tangled myself up Make sure that sort of doesn't break. Like I said, with that enough heat in that area. There we go. Run that over to a decoder wire. Use the thumb technique to strip the wire back. It worked perfectly on that one. Of course it did. Were you watching? Let's do it again. Thumb technique. Just pinch it with one hand, thumb in and drag. 
This is why I have a, a longer thumbnail, guys. Thank God. I should imagine with a long fingernail like some ladies have. Hey guys, that would be a little more tricky actually. You don't want to risk bending the nail. Network Southeast Class 50, which is what this model is. English Electric made the Class 50s in um, the late 60s, like 67, 69, something like that. But I could refer to Google, but uh, I'm filming it on my phone, so I can't exactly look up. This particular livery was something like 1986 to 92, something like that. There's a... There, there was a, a modification to the livery at the front where they carried the blue all the way forward to the yellow. But I liked this earlier one. And um, so Network South East covered around London all the way to Ex Exeter, which is, you know, in the west. And uh, routes around the south east of England. Hence the... I'm a mechanic. I've decided to go ahead and solder a little plug and socket, well just the socket, the plug is for the body, onto the decoder's output wires for functions. Well anyway, I just, just, I put some wires on there, okay? So tonight's job is to drill out the plastic moulded headlights, which are just little red dots on here, which I presume they meant to be tail lights I'm using a I think this is a one and a half mil drill bit might be one mil it's a small one anyway and I've ordered some bicolored LEDs off of the evil bay and they should be here in the next couple of days and then I'll show you how to wire those up remember they need to be common positive or anode in uh, LED terms. Cathode is your negative. Cathode is the switch. There we are now. I'm going to tidy that up a bit. Just you probably can't see it but I've drilled out the holes either side there uh, to put lights on the inside shining through that hole. You could put a bit of um, clear plastic, what do they call it, fibre optic there. So it looks like a lens but what i'm going to do is use this technique some gel plastic bostic which you then cure in an ultraviolet light we'll play with that tomorrow i'll show you how it works i've all this particular loco came with the cab floor already cut out i don't know why and the inside painted black so i think someone was going to put a light in there anyway curved piece of plastic designed to represent a lens I suspect I'm trying to get the drill bit to centre on there is tricky I could file it off or scratch it away with a knife fairly easily but I'm going to persevere I've started so I'll finish there we go it's biting nicely just that little tiny drill in there That's those two drilled out there and there. Adopt the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. And you won't fail. Or if you did, no one will notice. Anyway, two little holes drilled there for bicoloured LEDs to be glued on the inside. I need to paint the inside of this end black. So this end's already been done. So that will be my next job. And then I'll show you what comes next when I do it.
Network Card, the first rail card that's for everyone. One third of leisure travel anywhere in Network Southeast. The Network Card. Ten pounds buys one for anyone for a year. The time has come, the walrus said. Talk of many things. How does it go? Cabbages and sealing wax and things. Anyway, that aside, um, the motor has turned up. This is from Horns and Whistles Workshop. I've used them many times. Very helpful people. Very nice little units, but um, there are alternatives who I've used and have been perfect as well. So shop around, find what works for yourself. This particular motor comes with two different size pinion gears. I can't immediately tell the difference, but one of them will fit this, one of them won't. So we'll grab one at random and I see what it says. So this is designed to slip in the back of this motor housing, the old ring field, pull out these screws, give ourselves a bit better access. What I'll do is I'll take the bottom of the bogey off, Colonel Bogey. Oh, we say this life is safe for me. Little, 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 little. I will never, ever, ever do a thing about the weather because the weather never, ever does a thing for me. What a silly man. Yeah, silly man. I like to make people laugh. Now, that 3D printed housing with the motor already in there can slide fore and aft within that so we get the orientation correct. Oh, that fits in there a treat and doesn't fail on that center wheel either get that pushed a bit further in there yeah that's a really nice fit let me show you okay you've seen that good because there'll be a short quiz at the end i'm kidding there won't be just push this pinion gear to here okay opinions nicely on that shaft which came first is a matter of opinion <laughs> reason I laugh at my own jokes is well let's face it no one else is gonna write And there we have it, the motor is installated just there. You can see the gears turn nice and freely, turning the motor as well. And here's a close up. And here's a not close up. So make sure I get this round the right way. That was that way round, which means the bogey needs to go that way. Just confirm that with the front one. Yep. Uh -huh. There once was a fellow called Jim who never wanted to learn how to swim. And aboard the Titanic, he got in a panic. I wonder what happened to him. go all that remains is to solder these to there and we'll be done or at least done with this step
There we are. That's the motor and track pickup from that end wired up. So apart from lighting, which I'll do on the body next, this is ready for a test run. By the way, this has taken a few days to do this. I was clean shaven when this process started. I'm going to look like Santa Claus by the time we're done. <laughs> I did manage to score another hit on eBay. Some coaches to go along with this Network Southeast liveried loco. I'm looking forward to running those. Stay tuned. There's more to come. A lot more. Well, after studying some clips on the Google Tube, I discovered that bicoloured LEDs for this Class 50 won't do. Each of the lighting positions on there, and there are five on each end, have different coloured lights in. So a bicoloured LED, which is you know red or white, won't do the job. So I'm wiring individual LEDs to each of those spots separately with that i found a kit online for a class 50 that i just happened to have in stock i can't tell you where i got it from because i honestly can't remember if you google lima class 50 lighting kit you'll probably find it but he's got some very nicely wired up leds for the top with the resistor built in that's important and a little lighting board here for the lower lights with red on the sides and white in the middle here's one end i've done earlier in traditional blue peter fashion so took the cab out along with its glazing fixed that lighting board along the front there we do need to put a resistor in there so i have added a 1k resistor 1k is brown black red and up the top two yellow ones these holes were not drilled, so I had to drill them out. I didn't have a drill big enough, so I used a little file to twiddle them bigger. Same here, you saw me drilling those holes out, and they are now red. If I get my test Bayatari battery, we put the positron there and the negatron there. We have that white light in the middle. Can you see that? Yeah, well take my word for it it's there and reds on the outside yeah take my word for it again and these other two wires for blue is for positive and yellow is for negative Ta -da! there's those two top ones they're brighter than that white one I might change the resistor I've used in that slightly lower um, value so let me show you how I gone and did that, okay? There. 
eyes down look in there'll be a short quiz at the end so first thing I need to do is drill these holes up at the top here I've already gone through with a pilot hole with my one millimeter drill bit now I'm going to use this file to open out those holes big enough to allow that LED to poke through I think it's called a lighthouse style um, LED anyway it's got a protrusion a lens that kind of fits through a nice neat little hole a couple of millimeters and looks about the right scale for these lights so no ideal look up lighthouse LEDs I wonder what Pete Waterman's doing today. Hmm. Probably much the same. If you ever get a chance to meet him, he's a nice guy. He's a busy guy, so bear with him. But if you say hello, he'll say hello back. Met up with him at um, Great Electric Train Show in Milton Keynes. A little chat. He was busy, but he still stopped. We had a little conversation. It was nice to catch up with. I haven't seen him in ages. See how I'm opening those up with this file. And then deburring it with my Chris machine. Chris deburr. Okay, that's terrible. Let's see if these LEDs will now fit in there. We do that one's a bit tight we'll open it up a bit more obviously I'll poke them through from the other side but right we we'll make sure the pitch the distance between them is correct by offering them up in here a little bit on the tight side so we'll do some bendification those through there. There we are. Those are in there. Now, the clever stuff. If you thought that was good, you ain't seen nothing yet. It's double negative. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this Bostic UV sensitive glue. Other makes are available. This one was on sale in the range. Put a nice hefty dollop of that on the front. And then we just use this LED UV to cure it. It says it cures in five seconds, but I find that if I give it a bit more, because I've put a hefty dollop there, you know. I think it's time for tea. Ooh. I might have to upgrade tea version 5.0 to beer version 1. It's getting late in the day, you know. Let's give that a little wiggle. And it's cured. This is better than super glue for a couple of reasons. It's cheaper and it doesn't make a mess. Also, I find super glue only sticks to your fingers, nothing else. I'm sure I'm not the only one that super glue adheres vividly to one's digits. That has cured now. It's not wiggling, but I'm going to put it to one side for a moment because next thing to go in is the um, glazing and the cab floor. This one's been modificated, and um, well, we we can there's enough there to use anyway. Don't know why it was cut up. Perhaps some previous owner was going to put some detailing parts in there. I don't know. It's not going to affect us at all. So back to the chassis then. Uh, I have found my oil. Get yourself some of this. It's uh, slug slime. Wow. I've got a tube of bullfrog snot as well. 
This slug slime is, is a precision oiler, kind of made for watches. It's got a little tiny, oh, it's dripping already, blob on the end there. And that's all you need, a precision blob. I've been called worse. So I'm just running a little bead. I'm working quickly here because it's, it's dripping. And I'll put the cap on and I'll show you. Just running a little bead on the gears there, so they're nicely lubricated. This looked like a, a fairly clean, newish bogey running gear gears with very little use. But of course it's going to be 30 years old, potentially. So it's going to need cleaning up and lubricating, plus we've got the new motor in there. Back to this. I need to put that um, cab grazing back in there. Double check my gluing, double check my orientation. Yep, we are good to go. The next step, put the glazing back in. That should just clip in place. There it goes. Now, this little kitty has been made up with three LUDs in there, light emitting diodes. Two outer ones are red, the inner one is cold white. And it's been nicely made on a piece of copper fiber board and then cut so that the tracks don't short obviously and a piece of black tack uh, black tape on the back nicely made whoever made this they did a nice job i think it even came with a piece of fiber optic that you cut to fill in the holes that you drill that's long since been lost obviously because it's tiny and it's clear but I'm going to show you how to do it a different way. We need a 1K resistor again. I don't need great big legs on it like this. So I'm going to trim tails of that back. Hard times. Right. Is that hot? Yeah, definitely hot. Don't do that. So I'm going to tin the end of the blue wire because that's our common positive and stick a resistor to it. Lining these lights up with those holes and I have to kind of go off camera for a minute because I need a little better light. What I can do is put a, a blob of this in that corner just to tack it in place and in that corner. So over here in the kitchen, we've got some nice down lighters that I can see in there to make sure that these align. I can't really see it properly there. I'll take this with me. Now I'm going to go nuts with the glue. Because I don't want to have to be in here again. Put a bead in that corner. And a bead in that corner. Two. So little tiny blob of glue in each of those light holes to act as a lens. Ta-da! Well, now the bit we've all been waiting for. Literally no one's been waiting for. I need to find that plug. I had it right here. And um, why are these to it? Oh, there it is. All the blues need to go to each other because it's a common positive. So we can. We're working left handed now. Oh, that's hot. But they are together. Right. That's the common positives all together. Let me change the camera angle, get you in here a bit closer. Okay, closer. You see my red goes to these two resistors which power 
those two end boards and these two other blues which have their own resistors which do the yellow ones up the top. I've always enjoyed electrics since I was a little boy. I used to take things to pieces, see how they worked and occasionally I'd put them back together. <laughs> the trouble with soldering is you need three hands. You can get those fancy stands that hold things for you but you can always just get a bit of black tack and stick it on there. It's not going to mark the surface and you can easily peel it off and reuse it somewhere else. So, solder that on there. I've got really shaky hands today. Put that heat shrink tubing over there. Now we've got to wire up these whites and yellows and blues and greens and whatever else we've got. We've done the blue. So the headlight is white, but it needs to come on with the headboard up the top, which is white, even though they're yellow LEDs. Let's not get confused. So we're going to twist the two whites together from that end just to hold them in the place and we're going to grab a yellow from that end because we need the tail light to come on with it. You can wire them separately. You can put them all on different functions as well. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and just tie them together. So just double check my wiring. Tail lips. Yup. Head lips. Yep. Head code. Yep. Solder those together. And they were going to go on my black wire, which was my white wire output from the decoder. It's useful writing this stuff down. I wish they made these plugs and sockets with the right colour codes on them, but they don't, sadly, so having to remember what I've connected things to. Gosh, look how shaky my hand is. All those cups of tea, I suspect. 974 cups of tea I've had today. Nice. Now we need to do the same but reverse. Literally, the loco is going the other way. You need different lights coming on. We need tail lips from this end. We need head lips from this end. And we need the head code from this end. Twizzle those together and give them a blob of solder. That's got it. Now my heat shrink tubing. I'm going to stuff all this lot back in there. Use that bit of black tack to hold that resistor combo at the top stick a few other wires to it while I'm there there's the wiring done little blobs of black tack to hold it in place and now all we do is plug it in clip and we're done so if I ever want to service this I mean there's enough cable here to just do this but if I wanted to remove the body from the chassis in any way, I just unplug it. Turn that off. Let's go play trains.
this nice class 50 that we've been working on cruising around nice and slowly with just the right amount of volume I might dim those yellow ones down a bit though those yellow LEDs but there's the finished result Network South East Class 50 done Say night night night